Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer from St Michael's Chapel on this 10th Sunday after Trinity, the 13th of August. Um, in the, our morning and evening prayer booklets, the uh, service is on page 10, and I thought we'd begin with the prayers uh, as we did the other week, and then have the hymn where it says, um, opening hymn, just to be um, slightly different. Now, I'm not going to hear the response to the first response, but I'm sure that you will say it. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And let's pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. And now we shall sing our opening hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds in a Believer's Ear. Um, you can either look it up in Songs of Fellowship 194, Hymns Old and New 220, the sheet that I gave you that you may have printed out, or you should be able to see it on screen, left hand side. Oh 
The day is almost over, and the evening has come. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your Spirit come down upon us to set us free to sing your praise for ever and ever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this service is Psalm 88 which if you have the common worship daily prayer, it's on page 778 towards the back. 778 towards the back, Psalm 88. Now, if you have the book and you want to say the psalm with me, wonderful, otherwise please join in with the Gloria at the end. And then I'll use the little prayer that uh, occurs at the end of the psalm. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before you. Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles. My life draws near to the land of death. I am counted as one gone down to the pit. I am like one that has no strength. Lost among the dead. Like the slain who lie in the grave. Whom you remember no more. For they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit, in the place of darkness in the abyss. Your anger lies heavy upon me, and you have afflicted me with your waves. You have put my friends far from me, and made me to be abhorred by them. I am so fast in prison that I cannot get free. My eyes fail from all my trouble. Lord, I have called daily upon you. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will the shade stand up and praise you? Shall your loving kindness be declared in the grave, your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Shall your wonders be known in the dark, or your righteous deeds in the land where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I will cry to you. Early in the morning my prayer shall come before you. Lord, why have you rejected my soul? Why have you hidden your face from me? I have been wretched and at the point of death from my youth. I suffer your terrors and am no more seen. Your wrath sweeps over me. Your horrors are come to destroy me. All day long they come about me like water. They close me in on every side. Lover and friend have you put far from me and hid my companions out of my sight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In the depths of our isolation, we cry to you, Lord God. Give light in our darkness, and bring us out of the prison of our despair. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. comment if I may um, Psalm 88 was often used by uh, Jews if they were in prison or if they've been incarcerated for some reason and uh, it's entirely possible that Jesus prayed this as a prayer when he was uh, in the prison in the high priest's house on Thursday night before his uh, official trial on Friday morning and uh, of course he would have known it off by heart. But it was used very much as a prayer from the heart. And um, when I went to uh, Israel for 
on a church trip some, well, probably 25 years ago now, maybe even longer. Um, we went, when we were in Jerusalem, archaeologists had actually discovered the high priest's house in Jerusalem, um, where Caiaphas would have lived in Jesus' day. And in the basement was a room that was probably used as um, an overnight prison for people like Jesus who were awaiting trial in daylight. And uh, so we all gathered in this prison room underneath the high priest's house and we read Psalm 88, hopefully echoing the words of Jesus on that Maldy Thursday night. Now, our Old Testament reading is from the Song of Songs, or Song of Solomon, as it's called uh, in older versions of the Bible. Chapter 8, verses 5 to 7. If you're following it in the Good News Bible, it's on page 668 in the Old Testament. Page 668. The Song of Songs, chapter 8, verses 5 to 7. Now, bear in mind... Initially, this was probably written as a love song by Solomon to his wife, um, but it could be taken as a love song between the people and God and between God and his people. So this is headed the sixth song. Uh, and first of all, um, the women speak and then the woman herself uh, responds. Who is this coming from the desert, arm in arm with her lover? Under the apple tree I woke you, in the place where you were born. Close your heart to every love but mine. Hold no one in your arms but me. Love is as powerful as death. Passion is as strong as death itself. It bursts into flame and burns like a raging fire. Water cannot put it out. No flood can drown it, but if anyone tried to buy love with wealth, contempt is all they would get. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And you will have seen their words that we use quite often in our prayers and in our songs. Now, we're going to sing, um, Go Forth and Tell. This is still on theme of something that we need to uh, speak out about. Now this is in um, Songs of Fellowship 738 or Hymns on the New 164 or the words are here on the right hand side of the screen. Go forth and tell. And um, it may interest you to know that this was the original tune to this song that was um, then used for Tell Out My Soul, The Glory of the Lord. Um, I guess most of the time now when we sing that version of the Magnificat, we actually use the hymn tune called Woodlands, but the Go Forth and Tell tune, which we're going to use now, was the original one for this song as well.
apologise, I'm singing the um, original words. I'm actually just going to put a tune device on. Sorry, we'll, we'll restart. And I was happily um, singing out of youth praise without realising that the words have been updated in um, Hymns to Taste Shirts. So we'll start again. Sorry about that. Go forth and tell, O Church of God, away. God saving news to all the nations take. Proclaim Christ Jesus, Saviour, Lord and King. That all the world is worthy praise may Our New Testament reading is from Peter's second letter. It's towards the back of the Good News Bible on page 299. And it's 2 Peter chapter 3. And I'm just reading verses 8 to 13. And Peter is talking about the end. The day of the Lord. The moment when Jesus will return. 2 Peter 3 verses 8 to 13. But do not forget one thing, my dear friends. There is no difference in the Lord's sight between one day and a thousand years. To him the two are the same. The Lord is not slow to do what he has promised, as some think. Instead, he is patient with you, because he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants all to turn away from their sins. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, on that day the heavens will disappear with a shrill noise, the heavenly bodies will burn up and be destroyed, and the earth with everything in it will vanish. Since all these things will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people should you be? Your lives should be holy and dedicated to God, as you wait for the day of God and do your best to make it come soon. The day when the heavens will burn up and be destroyed, and the heavenly bodies will be melted by the heat. But we wait for what God has promised, new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness will be at home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now at the bottom of page 13, let's respond to what we've heard from the, gospel, from the, from the Bible. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Lord is the strength of my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And over the page, on page 14, let's say the Gospel Canticle, the Magnificat together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. over to page, on page 16, let us pray. We come to the Lord with despair for his world, but also with hope, because Jesus has saved the world. We pray for the church struggling to proclaim the good news of God's love. For King Charles III, the defender of the faith in this country. For the Church of England in Worcester Diocese and the Church in Chile, the USA, South Sudan and Nigeria. In Chelmsford Diocese, the Deanery of Hadley, the Venerable Adam Atkinson, Bishop of Bradwell, elect, and the Right Reverend Goody Francis de Quarney, the Bishop of Chelmsford. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For God's world, for the migrants who are fleeing persecution and war and conflict and pain and death, only to be fleeced of all their money and loaded into boats that are too full and likely to sink and many have lost their lives. We remember the six who died yesterday. Lord, for the perpetrators of this evil to be stopped and for justice to be done. And for the migrants themselves to find official routes to freedom. And we pray that this country would be able to help them in that uh, ambition. We pray for those areas of the world stricken by global warming. We think particularly this weekend of Hawaii and the wildfires and all those other areas that are still struggling. That the world will be sensible and attempt to solve its problems by working together and by being good instead of evil. We pray about the wars in Ukraine, Sudan and Yemen, that hostilities would cease and peace would reign. We pray for love between neighbours and countries and families to bring this despair to an end. We pray for those still trapped by terror, for the organisations that are going out of their way simply to kill and to destroy. And for those still plagued by COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our parish of Pitsy with Nevendon, that we would put aside differences, work together for the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For individuals, you have the notice sheet, either the physical paper from this morning or uh, 
in your email, let's concentrate on those names for a few moments and bring them before the Lord, plus anybody else you want to commend to him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for the bereaved, especially the war victims of Ukraine, Sudan and Yemen. For the families of those who are facing funerals this week. For those still coming to terms with the death of someone they love. And for all the bereaved to find hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally for each other, that we would not lose heart, we would not lose the faith like Peter sinking in the water, but we would stand up and follow Jesus and keep our eyes fixed on him once and for all. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, <coughs> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, <coughs> excuse me, as those forgive trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And on the page opposite, let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <coughs> oh, do excuse me. I'll just get the um, screen set up. Oh, what I'm doing is just for your interest. Um, last week's Um, service uh, after I put the recording on um, public I believe on YouTube uh, I mean sometimes I put it on unlisted so that only the people on our list or your good selves can watch it and, and that's only if I've said something that might be incredibly controversial for somebody who doesn't understand the context. Well, apart from the gospel, which is controversial to a lot of people, um, I didn't say anything, I didn't think, out of order. Anyway, I put it, the recording on YouTube and 32 people have tuned in to watch it. Um, usually it's only about six or seven, but I suspect because it was just available publicly, people were able to look, so uh, I'm quite amazed. Okay. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind is our next um, song and we can either, uh, Songs of Fellowship 79, Hymns Old and New 106, the sheet that I sent round or the words are on the screen.
the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. One day in the sight of our Lord is the same as a thousand years. To him there is no difference. A thousand years, can you imagine it? While I was musing on this particular subject, I thought, oh, I'll just look up what was happening here in England a thousand years ago. So it's the year AD 1023. The king was Canute, the Danish king, uh, who'd come over from Denmark with his Vikings and had been um, laying waste to quite a lot of England. But in this particular year, uh, Canute presided over a very special translation of some holy relics. There was a bishop, um, a bishop Althea, who had been murdered by the Danes some ten years before and um, he was Archbishop of Canterbury and he'd been buried rather hurriedly in St Paul's in London. But Canute uh, organised this ceremony to exhume Archbishop Althea's bones and translate them to Canterbury where they were buried in the cathedral. And this marked Canute's official reconciliation with the English people. It put him on their side and perhaps there was a moment of peace between the Danes and the Saxons. That was a thousand years ago this year ancient history to us. I guess we've heard of Canute, he was the guy who sat on a chair on the beach and told the waves to disappear and of course they didn't take any notice. But um, a apart from that we wouldn't know all those little details and I just discovered this one thing a thousand years ago. But to God it's nothing. It's the same as the passing of a 24-hour day and that's because time matters to us. We are, we are hooked into time, we are locked into it, we, we respond to it, we moan about it if it goes too quickly or if it goes too slowly. The older we get we complain about the passing of the years, but to God it's nothing. Time does not matter to God because God is without time, he's eternal, he's there. And that's why it's useless to speculate about when the end of the world is going to come, when the day of the Lord will be, because it doesn't matter as far as God is concerned. Yes, it will happen in our time, in a year, in a day, in an hour, 
whenever, but it's not for us to try to work out when that will be, because that's not what God wants. As Peter says, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. No warning, no mention of it, but it will happen. But we have been warned. Ever since Jesus was here 2,000 years ago, he warned us that one day he would return. He told us that one day God's kingdom would be established. He told us that one day he would raise us up and we would be with him forever. Now, we don't know when that is, but we must live our lives in readiness for the moment when our Lord comes. And when Jesus returns, everything will change. The old order will go. No more grief, no more death, no more pain. Nothing. Gone. But we should be raised up to inhabit the new heavens and the new earth which will be perfect and eternal. No time, just eternity. Forever and ever and ever. There's an island off Scotland called Iona, a very holy place where there have been Christians living for centuries. The word Iona is taken from the New Testament. It means forever. And that's what God promises all of us. Jesus has won the victory by giving his life on the cross to destroy Satan and to end Satan's power over us. The Lord of this world has been overthrown. And Jesus' resurrection has conquered death and opened the gateway to life and prepared the way for our resurrection when Jesus will raise us up on that last day. What we need to do is believe in him. Believe that it will happen. Trust that it will happen in his time and not ours. And not get worried about uh, the dates and the times, but be prepared for eternity with our Lord. And go forth and tell it to the rest of the world. Amen. Now, last hymn, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, Songs of Fellowship 599, Hymns Old and New 553, or the words that I'm going to put on the screen, or the sheet if you printed them out. lost one line I might just have to reduce the size very very slightly there we go we've got all of it now hopefully you can see <coughs> I'll make sure I'm singing the same words as you I think actually with this one there is only one set of words not been changed or updated at any point. Can abide how we trust and obey. 
never feel the need to stand away. Just stand away, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to just stand The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.